Welcome back, and this is Alemi from Yayeo Botanica, and today we're going to have a short video class on mistakes that people make at their ancestral altar. So let's get started. So today it's like the craze, right? Everyone wants an ancestral altar, and um, I noticed that online and all over, everyone's talking about an ancestral altar, and I think it's really, really positive that our ancestors are being kind of lifted up and that people really see a lot of value with that, especially in the United States, because in other countries, ancestral worship is all the time, whether it be in the Hindu tradition, many African practices, um, traditional Indian uh, practices in Asia, all over the world, ancestral worship or ancestral veneration is what is done on a daily basis. It's cultural. It's not something that people need to really incorporate. It's already a part of their training, right? But for us here in the United States, I see that there's a really big uh, push with that these days, and especially in communities of culture, um, excuse me, communities of uh, people who are of black and brown skin culture. So Today is a great day to talk about some of the mistakes that people oftentimes make at their altar. We know that the ancestral altar is really there to uplift the ancestors because when they're uplifted, we're uplifted. When they're strengthened, we're strengthened. So, and it's a wonderful place also to find healing, to heal a family, to heal the person to have them express themselves to their ancestors that they can get that kind of love and comfort that can help to heal their family and heal them, as I said before. But in order to do that really well, we need to make sure that we're not making some detrimental mistakes, right? And so the first thing that, that I would say is that the ancestral altar needs to always be clean. I have seen hundreds of altars and some of them have dust all over it's confusing it's got all this bing bang you know i bought this tchotchke at, at this fair and i had this tchotchke and all these different things that are just so confusing and messy absolutely not that is a no-no why because you want when you're getting spiritual information for it to be clear well, if your altar's a mess, then that's what's going to be going on here. If your ancestors are confused, then how can they truly help you to evolve, right? And how are you helping them to evolve, right? You, can't, you don't go up a ladder uh, 10 rungs at a time. You're going to fall off of it. So organization is very, very, very important, especially at the altar. It needs to be clean. I've seen altars where um, there's too much incense, dust, and dirt all over. It looks horrible, it's not good presentation, and it is not inviting for the spirit, right? So as an example, this is an incense uh, holder that we have in the store. We're always burning incense in here. This is fine. It's in something, it's encased. but. There are times it's all the ash has fallen all around it. Clean it up, right? We're telling them something about how we feel about them based on the environment that we're giving them to live in, right? So um, for me, these are nice, easy ways too. I put a lot of um, either pebbles. In this case, there's rice in here. You stick your incense, all the stuff falls in there. Perfectly good way, homegrown, cheap way to, to, to keep it clean and to keep it very confined. So we talked about cleanliness. We talked about order, right? So the next thing is the glasses need to be clean. I love going to people's houses. The ancestors water is all the way down here. Their stuff stuck all to the glasses. It's gross, totally gross. If you see this glass, it has a ring going around it. Well, this is a glass that we have in the store for the spirits. We clean them once, once a week. Perfect. But not all the time. People have their glasses dried up all the way down here and go, oh, here's my altar. 
Well, the water is a catalyst for the spirit. And again, if there's no clarity, how can the spirit truly come through and impact your life in a really positive way? So clean glass. I just put this here and look at these bubbles going around already. The spirit is coming, coming to the glass, coming to enjoy the benefits at the altar versus something like this. One of the things that um, I've discovered is that there are times that people are very demanding to the spirit. I have this problem. Can you resolve this right now? I need this. I need this. I need this. I need this. It's all about what they need. There's no thank you. There's no, I pray that you are blessed by me putting this light here at the altar by me giving you food, by me giving you these things. And I pray that you continue to give me and to help me have the means to be able to not only take care of you, but to take care of me. See how different that language is versus, you know, my boss has just been effing up all the time and I need you guys to figure out how to resolve this problem for me immediately. That's not the way to speak to the ancestors. So, it's good to have some assertiveness, but it's even more important to have some humility. And so I encourage you all to think about your language because I listen to many people and it's always me, 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 me. Yes, it is important that your life is filled, but it's a handshake. They were here before you. Without them, you wouldn't be here. So where's that respect right where's that humility so that i would encourage people do not make the mistake of disrespecting them because that can slow down your own progress right people put people who have passed away tragically too quickly on the altar they pass away they had a god forbid a bad accident or got killed or something died under horrible circumstances boom they're on the altar no the spirit has to go through their own transition in the bible it talks about 40 days and 40 nights in some traditions it's uh, a whole year cycle other traditions it's 16 months whatever it is your context is that your training is whether it be you have an elder that you work with or some place that you use as your resource, whatever it is, be careful of putting people on an altar who have died under tragic circumstances. Suicide people should not be put on an altar unless you are getting some kind of uh, guidance from someone who is very experienced and very seasoned with dealing with uh, people who have passed on. I do contact. People come to me to contact people who've passed away and so on and so forth. Well, I've been doing this for quite some time. I'm clear about some of the things that shouldn't go on an altar. So I tell you, if you don't have someone to speak to about that, when in doubt, leave it out. So anyone who's passed tragically, do not put them on the altar. Okay. Even if it's apparent. And that's something, again, you're free to inbox me if you have a question about a parent who has passed away tragically, that either you have them on your altar or you would like to do that. If you have not done it, don't start until you get an answer. Mixing an intention altar and an ancestral altar. So again, there are people who they have an altar, they put it up for their ancestors, but then they'll come to the store and in the Botanica, they're going to buy their money drawing candle or they're going to, they're going to purchase their love drawing candle. That's not the ancestor's job. That's for your spirit guides or other guides. So if you're going to have an altar specifically for the ancestors, it can be a big giant counter where this part is for the ancestors and this part is for money and this part, but mixing them together again, causes um, a dilution of your message, right? Is the altar for money or is it for me? I'm the ancestor. What's going on? Which one is it? Right? So it's good not to mix these things together. It's good to have them separated. 
pictures of people who are alive on the ancestral altar. This is so big. I can't imagine how many of you guys are watching this video right now going, my pictures on there with Aunt Jo, or these people are mixed together. It is best ancestral altar is for people who are deceased. Living people can have their picture there temporarily for something. Example, someone is having a hard time with maybe a childbirth, right? Having a child or there's a special relative who's not doing very well and you're asking the ancestors to help them. That is a temporary thing. Their picture may be up there for 21 days, 30 days, seven days, something, but it's not staying there permanently. Living people should not permanently be in a picture or represented at an altar, an uh, ancestral altar, unless you know what you're doing 100%. All right. Many people have learned that you put down food offerings for the ancestors, right? At the altar, no rotting food, no dried up food on a plate no rotting fruit, nothing rotting, nothing rotting. And if it's something sour, as an example, a lime with fruits, or, um, you know, maybe you gave them an offering and you gave them lemonade, that's one thing. But overall, try not to leave things there that are not things that you would consume. If you're not going to eat it, don't leave it there. If you're not going to eat it, don't give it to them, right? So please keep that in mind. We want to treat them the way that we would want to be treated because just because they're not physically around doesn't mean that spiritually or me uh, metaphysically that they're not around. They're everywhere. They're inside of your body. Their blood is your blood, right? So let's, let's be conscientious about how we treat our ancestors. Do not slave the ancestors. Oh, I'm, you know, you got to do this for me. And now I'm not going to put any food here until you do this and you do this and you do this. You need to be careful again with trying to enslave them, treating them like they work for you, not with you. Again, I mentioned the, the, the clean glasses with the beautiful clear water, nothing dirty. So if you put coffee, the coffee has mold, remove it. If you have anything that is, is in, that is dirty, you want to, you want to give them a beautiful, clean environment, including periodically changing their white cloth that you have at the altar. Their white cloth should be white. One of the don'ts is do not put black cloth with water or any kind of setup on the altar. The ancestors fabric or color, can be multicolor, like an African fabric or something like that, and or white. Something multi that's still bright and refreshing, or white, but not black. And lastly, no black candles. Why? Because the ancestors are people who have passed on that need elevation and light. Well, white is an elevating color. The sky's not black only at night. It's light more than it is black and it's really light with a reflection of darkness, right? So at the end of the day, no black candles for the ancestors. White is right in this context, right? White candles are what they need and they definitely need that for a very long time until you are seasoned and you're um, very experienced with having the altar and then knowing how to change the colors periodically. And the last thing, flowers that die really easily. Those of you that put flowers on your altar, please do not put flowers with thorns. It's best to use things like ro uh, daisies, um, carnations are number one, things that are hardy that last for a very long time, fantastic. But flowers that die quickly, like roses, and have thorns, it is advisable not to use those. Why? Because again, you want to have a loving, sweet, 
caring in, uh, interaction with them and not a prickly, harsh one, right? So good luck to you. I hope this was really helpful. You got some things to think about, um, maybe some adjustments to make. And good luck, Ashe, and see you next time. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, definitely like us, give us a thumbs up, share us with others, send us your comments, come visit us in the store, and follow us on Instagram and Facebook. See you next time.